I actually want to call your mind back to something that we've I introduced before, but we didn't really use very much. We kind of noticed it, and we're like, yeah, that's interesting, and then we moved on. Okay. This thing called the general term. I've shown you what it is, I just haven't given it the name. Here's the idea. If I gave you this kind of um, this kind of binomial expansion, to the power of seven is probably just within reach of what you'd be expected to actually write out by hand. If it's to the power of seven, how many terms will there be in the final expansion? Eight. There'll be eight. Very good. Because there'll be the zeroth term, zero, one, two, three, all the way up to seven. And if you can count the zeroth term, that means eight in total. Okay? So that's just within reason to write out. And therefore, if you needed to solve a question that had this in it, you could potentially, you could foreseeably write the whole thing out. But it doesn't take very much to change this question a little bit so that you're like, forget that, I don't want to write that down. For example, if I just change the power. Okay? Now this, you would be mad to write out. You'd, you know, you'd start writing it and then the sun would set and then you'd be like, I want dinner. Okay, So you would not be expected <laughs> to write this out. Um, nor would you be, like I mean, this is the kind of example where you could, you could physically write this out. The enormous paper you could, but you're really just costing yourself time. Like clearly, by putting this down here, we're trying to say to you, hey, you now have all of this more sophisticated machinery for understanding this. Don't write the whole thing out. Go straight to the part of it that you want. So what we did was we said, I could say this is equal to, and then I introduced this sigma notation I did. Do you remember this? This guy here, right? Sigma. Good morning. Uh, what does sigma, why do we use this for S again? What, what, what does it signify? It, it, it signifies a sum, hence S for sigma. You're adding up a whole bunch of things because uh, now there are not 8 but 18 terms in here. Okay. So I could say, I could add up from n equals 0, that's the first term that I would count, up to the last term, what would the last term be? 17. And every term in the expansion, all 18 of them, are going to be in much the same format. What's the format going to be? I'll give you a clue. There are three pieces. I don't remember what three pieces are. What do you start with? OK, we're going to have the NCR bit. So that's the binomial coefficient. Now, have a think about this. What will each of these, sorry, that's not an N. That should be an R. What is each of these going to look like for this particular expansion? Which, which row of Pascal's triangle am I on? I'm on the 17th one, right? So it'll be 17 C, well, whichever term that you want, so you'll count along. R. There's the first component. What about the other two? Where did the other two come from? Yeah, it, came, it comes from these guys, right? So you're going to get some number of these. How many? Uh, I, so what I've done is I've, I've <laughs> I renamed this because I remember we usually designate n to be the row, right? So r is which term along. So I can say I've got r of those, which means that I'll have negative two y's. How many of those will I have? Okay, so in total, right, by the end you're going to have something to the power of 17. So your first one, you'll have none of them. And then there'll be one, two, three, and eventually you'll get to the last one. And you'll have that many. Okay, does that make sense? Now, I should point out, do you recall, because, um, because Pascal's triangle and the expansion of this thing is symmetrical, it would be fair, it would be equally fair, to write this in reverse order. Yeah? I could write it like this. There's still going to be 0 to 17 terms. Right? This guy out the front, if you write him forwards or backwards, will be the exact same series of numbers, okay? But then I could write these around the other way, right? I could say, well, let's put this guy out the front, like that. And then I could put this guy out the back, right? If you wrote out these whole things, you would get exactly the same thing, just in reverse order. Do you agree with that? Okay, so the reason why this is useful now is because rather than having to write out the whole thing, if I want a particular term, I can go straight to it. For instance, I could say, which term has the x to the 13th in it, right? Well, you don't have to write all of them out until you get to x to the 13th. You could say, okay, well, which one? Actually, we'll do it both ways. Uh, let's go this way. If I were to use this one, which term will have x to the 13th in it? I want, have a look, there's the 
the x's, right? In order to get x to the 13, this 3x needs to be raised to the 13. Do you agree? That's the only way you'll get 13x's exactly. So therefore, I want r equals 13, this r will be 13, and this r will be 13. Right? So if I want the x to the 13 <coughs> term, that guy, right? I'm just going to go straight to r equals 13 like so. I'm going to say 17c r13. Yes? 3x to the 13. What will the term on the end be? Negative 2i to the 4. <coughs> Ta-da. Now, had I chosen this way, had I written it this way, I could still do the same thing, except it won't be the um, r equals 13 term that will give me the x to the 13. Which one will it be? r equals 4. It'll be r equals 4. Because remember, I've gone from the other direction, right? So I'm just counting from the opposite end. So I would go, okay, that's fine. Uh, 17c4, yes. How many of these guys am I going to have? The negative two ways. Um, I've chosen r equals 4 this time, all right? So this is, this is this guy over here, right? Which is unsurprising because we already knew that. And then, of course, over here, you've got 17 minus 4, which is the 13 I was looking for. Like so, right? So you can see, oh yeah, th these are exactly the same thing. And I also know that these guys are the same thing, right? Do you remember that? So this is my ncr equals nc of n minus r, okay, they're the same thing. And you can confirm that with your factorial notation. Do you remember what our factorial notation for 17c13 would be? So it's a fraction, what's on the top? 17 factorial, so I'm writing this one, right? So on the bottom there will be 13 factorial, 4 factorial, right? That's what I would write if I wrote that. Of course, if I had to go with this, the numerator would be the same, but then these guys would just be the other way around, which is the same thing. Okay, so that's why you can content yourself that yes, this is indeed the same expansion.